this video is to explain how the software for my doorbell project works. So if you're watching my videos, I installed an arcade button at my front door that's connected to an ESP8266, turning it into a smart doorbell, if you will. So how does this work? Well, the first thing you learn when you start learning how microcontrollers work, such as an Arduino, is how to make an LED flash. And the second thing you usually learn is how to make that LED flash when you push a button. And that's all this is basically doing. It's taking a signal of when a button is pressed and then doing a simple command, which with an ESP8266, which has Wi-Fi built in, which if you've been following my series, you're familiar with this, uh, this chip, um, it can work as a server a web server, or it can also work as a web client. And in this case, I have it set up as a web client. So what happens is when you press that button, it signals the ESP, and all the ESP does is send an HTTP request to another computer. Why do I have it set like this? Now, the ESP8266 can do a lot of stuff itself. It could be sending out a bunch of different signals, but I wanted to keep it simple. I like to keep the, the projects, the code on my boards, as simple as possible and have the work done elsewhere if possible, which is great with the ESP8266, since it has built-in Wi-Fi, you can just have it tell other computers to do the heavy lifting. What this does is it makes it simple. First of all, it's, it's faster because I have this code doing on the other computer doing multiple things at once, where the ESP8266 can only do uh, you know one thing at a time. So if it's sending one request, let's wait till that request is done before it can send the second request and so forth and so on, where a desktop computer or a laptop or even a little tiny Linux server can do multiple requests at once. So it is more efficient that way and also if I want to make changes I shouldn't have to ever unhook the ESP8266, so I don't have to unhook the button, unhook the power, bring it into my room, plug it in, up, you know, update the code and upload it. Sure, the ESP8266 supposedly can do over-the-air updates, but that can get messy and there's really no need for that. All I have it doing is sending one HTTP request when the button is pressed. And it's sending that across my local network, although it could go out to the internet, uh, but across my local network to my desktop computer, which is running a very minimal HTTP server. And when it gets that request from the ESP, it runs a shell script. It doesn't have to be a shell script, though. It could be a PHP, a Perl, it could be C or C++. Or, or Python, any programming language, even if you're running a, a Windows as your server, I don't know why you would do that, but if you're running Windows as your server, you could write your program in Visual Basic and the ESP could communicate with it that way. But I have it going to this computer, which runs a simple shell script, which is probably less than 10 lines of code, and it does a few things, but the first three, three things it does, it does simultaneously. So the ESP says to my computer, hey, the doorbell rang. My computer goes, okay, play an MP3 of a doorbell sound and send another HTTP request using wget to my wife's computer, which is also running a very minimal HTTP server. And it, that server, that script, tells her computer to play an MP3 of a doorbell. And it happens so fast, you would think there would be a delay in there, but it happens so fast, the second I press that button, you can hear both computers ringing simultaneously and the audio is almost perfectly in sync which was surprising. I thought it'd be like bing bong, bing bong, but it's bing bong for both of them. So the three things it does initially after receiving the request from the ESP is play a sound, tell my wife's computer to play a sound, and then it sends another HTTP request to my web server up in the cloud, my Films by Chris server, where it's running a PHP script that sends out two emails, but they're not regular emails, they're actually sending emails that are going to be converted into texts to my wife's phone and my phone. You may or may not know this, but most cell phone carriers allow you to receive texts from email. So if I wanted to, let's say um, I'm running AT&T uh, and my phone number is 555-123-4567. Well, I can send email to 555-123-4567 at E, uh, att.mobile.net or whatever their extension is. I don't know what it is, but you can look them up online. So that's all my web server is doing is it's sending two emails to my phone and my wife's phone uh, that are going to come through as texts. And usually they come in in under 10 seconds. It's text messages, so it could take a little bit longer, but those messages are for when we're not at home, we just know the doorbell is ringing. Okay? So it does all three of those things at once makes the sound, tells my wife's computer to make a sound, and tells my web server to send out two, e two emails or text messages. And that all happens like that. Then, 
what my computer does is it sends a signal to a, another small little web server that I bought for probably about $30. It's a little computer, little, uh, little box that I have all my security cameras plugged into. I have four cameras on the outside of my house and they all plug into that and it runs as a web server so with anything with a web browser I can view those uh, images. Uh, on my local network, but I can also open it up with my router to the world if I want to, and password protect it, whatever, if I need to do that. But I don't need to do that in this case because what my computer does next, after setting up those initial three signals simultaneously, it then tells that little web server to switch to the front door camera, in case it was looking at another camera at the time, it switches to the front door camera, and then it does, does another wget request and requests from that little server the image from the camera. Then, another HTTP request sends that image to my Films by Chris server. And it does that in a loop three times. So it takes three images, approximately a second apart, however long it takes it for it to download and upload that image. So I, I do that because I want to make sure I get a good shot of the person. The doorbell, the way the doorbell is, usually when the person rings at the first shot, uh, sometimes it's just the top of their head because they ring it and then they back up. Uh, lots of times that I've gotten, uh, the person who rings my doorbell the most is my daughter since I've installed it, usually when we're either leaving the house or coming in. So usually the first shot, I don't see her because she's so small, and then the second or third shot is her running away after ringing the doorbell. Anyway, so now I can, when I receive a text on my phone saying, it all it says is doorbell rang, and since it's, a text, it's already timestamped, so I know when the doorbell rang, I can now click on a link that brings me to the folder on my web server and I can look at the last three pictures and see who rang the doorbell. Um, so another great thing, uh, that was my original script and then I added a time check because uh, I don't want to be disturbed in the middle of the night. So my script, the ESP sends a signal to this computer and right now if it's before 8 a.m. or after 8 p.m. it doesn't ring uh, this, my wife's computer or my computer and it doesn't send text to our phone, phone numbers. But it still takes three images. So if someone rang my doorbell in the middle of the night, they're not going to wake me up, they're not going to bother me. You know, hopefully it's not important, in which case I guess they would knock. But I don't want to be disturbed if someone was playing Ding Dong Ditch or whatever. But I would still get pictures of them. And great part again, I didn't have to go get the ESP to do that update. I later on thought of doing that and all I did was add you know, a line that checks the time and then add everything else into an if-then statement. And uh, so that's how I end up doing this. And so now at this point, since I don't have to, everything goes to this computer and all the ESP does is say, hey, the doorbell rang and my computer can do the rest. Well, if I added another computer or want to send another signal or do something else, I just have to update this computer. I don't have to go get that chip. If we had a third computer in the house or I wanted to send it to another chip that made another chime noise or something, I just do that on my computer again. No need to go pull that chip and plug it into my computer. So let's go ahead and just do a demo of that ringing. Again, I'm going to leave the camera inside and ring the doorbell from the outside so you can see me ringing it. Lighting will probably be horrible since it's darker in my house than it is outside. But um, you should hear both computers ringing and again, you're probably not even going to be able to tell the two computers apart. You might sound a little echoey because there's two of them, but it's pretty much simultaneously the two of them ring. And then within 10 seconds, I usually get a text message. So that is how it all works. Uh, and that's how I decided to do it. Again, you can make the ESP do more work than that. But I, again, I like to keep the code on my uh, controllers very very simple and let computers do the heavy lifting and again I'm using my desktop computer and I'm using um, in my case you can use whatever web server you you want I'm using uh, BusyBox's HTTPD which I already have BusyBox installed on my computer because I use it all the time BusyBox is a toolkit that you would find on routers and other lightweight stuff and the entire thing is just over a megabyte and that's not just the web server that's like 50 different tools the web server is just part of that so theoretically I can recompile it and make it any smaller my point is it runs on routers and wall plugs if you, if you have a smart thermostat or something it, it's probably running either BusyBox or ToyBox which is a similar project um, so it's not using any system resources of anything on my computer that's worth even calculating um, and I, I'm just bringing it up because I think BusyBox is great and uh, you don't have to worry about it eating up memory on this. In fact, 
I chose my desktop. My desktop's on, on all the time. It's on a battery backup. But really, it probably would have been a better option for me to point it uh, to my Pogo plug, which is my little $20 Linux server that I have had up and running nonstop for years on a battery backup. And I could have, you know, just as easily had the server running on that little ARM machine. So, thanks for watching. Let's go ahead and do that little demo of the doorbells ringing. Probably look like a silhouette in the shot, but I want you to be in there so you can hear the doorbell ring. So both my computer and my wife's computer should ring when I press this button in three, two, one. I'll do it again in three, two, one. So as you can see, it's almost, it's pretty much instant. The second I click the button, both computers ring, and they ring so close in time that you can't even tell that they're coming from two different computers. Uh, another thing I meant to add is that uh, that I originally set this up and then I added a feature to the script running on my computer that checks the time and the doorbell will not ring or send us text messages if it's before 8 in the morning or after 8 in the evening. Um, also that's just so we're not disturbed. Uh, but I also, even though it doesn't send texts or play the doorbell sounds, it still takes three pictures. So if someone was to ring my doorbell in the middle of the night, it would still get three pictures and my front porch light is always on. So still be able to see them. Plus the cameras do have night vision. Um, so that's it. If you have any questions, let me know, but it doesn't get simpler than that. It's a button press and an HTTP request, which sends out a bunch of other HTTP requests and everything's done that way. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy my series and if you join my channel, think about becoming a subscriber and check out my Patreon channel or my Patreon page over at patreon.com forward slash melex1000. Also check out my website filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's links to both of those in the description of this video. And there at my website, you can search through videos from uh, both of my channels. Um, I hope you like it. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I hope that you have a great day.